What's good guys, this is Joseph and today we're going to be learning how to edit your cinematics to make them look nice and smooth and a couple effects that we can put on top of them to make them look even better. So let's go right into After Effects and look at it. This right here is the project file to the preview that you saw in the beginning of the video and I'm actually going to be adding on to that edit and I'm going to make it into like a full edit on my channel but I just decided to stop it short just to teach you guys how to do how I do my cinematics. So. Be, look, be on the lookout for that, stay tuned, and let's go ahead and get right into this. It's, it's going to be pretty easy because cinematics, they're pretty fun to edit and like, you know, especially if you record your own, just like I did here. So this is the first cinematic and I'm not going to teach you how I sync the trick shot because I already showed you guys how to do that in another tutorial. Um, so we're just going to be focusing on cinematics. I've showed you guys how to make them and this is using the method that I used in my latest video that's going to be in the description if you have not seen that yet so let's get right into that so this is just a regular cinematic death cinematic that I've made and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it on again just so I can show you the process of me making it again and I'm gonna turn off my adjustment layers because we're gonna get into those a little bit later Okay, there we go. Press the left square bracket key to make it snap to your little cursor thingy. And then if you don't know where those keys are, it's right next to the P key. The left one and the right one are there. See the right one makes it go on the right. Left one's on the left. It's a pretty easy concept to grasp. So now you press Control alt t to get your time remap. And then go ahead and go to the end of it. And drag this little number forward. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this layer so I can see what I'm doing drag this number forward until the end of the cinematic where you want it to end at and there we go I'm just gonna end it right there and then press alt and then left square I mean alt and then right square bracket key for it to be all nice and cut there highlight the keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease or F9 on your keyboard and then go into your graph editor and just like any other time remap thingy you're gonna to want to play with this look at it a bunch of times till you get it just right and you basically you'll never get it like perfect on the first try unless you were like very good with time remap because you know pra practice makes perfect and no one's perfect so most people can get it in a couple tries just keep previewing it after you're done because it's different than PC PC you can drag it like all the way up and then it will look really nice with console. It's a lot different. And I decided to make this a console tutorial because I know most of you edit console. And it's basically the same for PC. It's just editing cinematics in general. So play with that. Now we go out of your graph editor. And then once you do that, now we can put some scale onto the clip. So press shift, then S. So now we have our scale keyframe this just drag this up to like 130 135 it does not really matter go to the middle of it put it back down to 100 or 102 or just back basically back down to 100 and then go to the end and then put it back to 130 135 highlight all of these again then press F9 on those and now go into the graph editor for those things and drag this all the way to the right the middle one and then drag these about halfway down and now we have it gets smaller in the beginning and then it gets big going out I do that for almost every one of my cinematics except for this one right here because this one's just going back it doesn't really make sense to do that it looks kind of weird I do something a little bit different for this cinematic just because of the fact that it has a, the sky in it so you can see my little light rays there and we'll get into that after we go through my blurs the blur adjustment layer so basically it's a it's an adjustment layer I put on top of my whole edit and it is basically my transition 
So how we make this, I'm gonna make another adjustment layer so we can duplicate the effect. So you see what I have on here? The first thing I have is camera lens blur, which is personally my favorite blur in After Effects. It looks the cleanest in my opinion. And then we got brightness and contrast. So let's go ahead and drag in camera lens blur. Go to your effects and presets tab and drag it on to the clip. And then press the little stopwatch on the blur radius and don't worry about all of this unless you want to really go in depth with customizing your clip. So you want this to be at 10 after you press this little stopwatch and then press it on your keyboard to look at your keyframes. And you want it to be at 10 because this is where you want it to be the most. You want to have the most um, blur here because that's where the peak of the transition is. Then go 15 keyframes before by pressing Control and then your left arrow key. And then go 15 frames before and just drag that down to zero. And now we have the first half done. Doesn't matter how far ahead you go for it to go back down to zero. I always put it maybe halfway between the cinematic or halfway into the cinematic. Looks nice like that. Put them down to zero and then highlight those, press F9 on the keyframe, and now drag in brightness and contrast from your effects and presets, and then just drag that onto the adjustment layer. And then it's basically the same same steps. Um, put Click the stopwatch for both of them, put the brightness up to 20, and then put your contrast up to about 15 to 20. And so now it just looks better like that since it's blurred out you can kind of see it a little bit better and then just go 15 frames before and then just drag both of them down to zero same thing at the end just put it back at zero and so now if you press you on your keyboard you can see all of the keyframes that you made and instead of making them all again just go 15 frames before the next cinematic or clip if you're making a transition from that. And then just highlight all of these. Press Control C, then Control V. And so now you have them and you can put them on every single one of your clips. So now I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer for right now because we don't need it anymore. Now we're going to be going into the next cinematic, which is the cinematic that has a sky in it. And it's going backwards. You can see it just going backwards. So the first thing I did with it is just synced it up and that's all I did with it. And I'm not going to show you again, I'm just going to show you the graph editor. This is the kind of shape you want to get. It looks pretty nice. You just dragged it up straight and then to the side a little bit for each of them. That's basically like what I do for every single one of my cinematics or whenever I'm using time remap. And then after that I put this little thing, this little adjustment called CC light rays. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new adjustment layer and show you how to make that. And then we're going to go to your effects and presets tab, type in CC light and raise. It's right here. Everybody has it because it's not a third party plugin. So after you drag it onto the adjustment layer, let's go ahead and look and see what I have. I keyframe the intensity on this one. And so I have color from source checked and allow brightening. And it's, it's already checked for those. And just change this from round to square. So now you can see that. And I would usually, I would just drag this up to the top. Because that's where the sun is. The sun's always in the top of the sky. This normal thing. And then just change the intensity. Probably about, you know, 175, 1, 200. I mean, 200. I think 200 would be the better number for this because it's, you, you want it to be pretty bright. So now, let's see what we have down here. Changes of radius, 165, 175, 200, and then warp softness, 75. Just play around with it, see what you want, what fits the clip the best. And that's a little bit too much, so you might want to go down to 150. That's pretty good. And then the warp softness up to 75, 80 just to make it a little bit softer. And we might want to change this back up to 200 since we made it a little bit softer. See, look, that looks so much nicer. And just drag it to where it looks best on your clip. And then it looks even better with a CC. 
And so if you press the stopwatch on the intensity, drag that back down to zero, and then go about a third of the way into your clip, drag it back up to 200, just so it looks nice. And I'm gonna turn this on off so you can see. And you see if you turn it off, it's not as bright up there. So it just is, it's a really nice enhancement to your clip. So the next adjustment layer I have up here is a shake. And it's kind of optional, depends. It's just sapphire shake. I don't even use it half the time because it doesn't look that great. So that's basically it for editing your cinematics. So one extra thing you can do with it, instead of scaling this one and like making the scale look like editing the scale, press shift and R to get rotate and then press the keyframe to rotation and then rotate it. Um, maybe go eight. It's pretty good. And then you're going to want to actually you are going to want to put scale in this so press shift s because you see if you rotate it it looks weird right here so let's go ahead and, and edit the scale as well and then keyframe the scale now you go into the middle and then put both of them back down to 102 or 100 and then put the scale back down to zero and this is like you don't want to do too much to your edits because less is more in my opinion and adding a whole bunch of like little subtle effects is a pretty good idea adding a lot that you don't really need kind of messes up the edit in my opinion honestly I just like pure syncing and clean edits but a lot of people like to over edit so I'm just gonna throw that out there this is not over editing a clip I'm just saying if you want to keep adding a whole bunch of those stuff Sometimes it works out for the best, but sometimes it doesn't. So put the scale back up after you put the rotate. So rotate to about negative four, half as much as you did last time. And then just put the scale accordingly and just easy use all these keyframes again. And then go into your graph editor and then just drag them out just like we did with the scale. And then this is about, this is different, just leave that, leave it alone, and just play with the scale. And there we go. And then if you preview it, it looks good. Sometimes it doesn't look good. Like for right, for right there, my black, my black bars would cover that up. But it just doesn't look good in my opinion because of, it's because of the song. So I'm just going to delete that but you can always play around with it on the graph editor to make it move either starting out fast or starting out slow it doesn't really matter what you do there so now I just deleted my clip I'm gonna do I just deleted I'm just gonna delete the adjustment layer actually hold up I'm gonna delete the rotation and the shift and if you want to like delete them just press you on your keyboard now you have your keyframes just delete all of the keyframes and just put it back to where they originally were 100% scale and then put the rotation back to zero and so now your clip is fixed and now your light rays are there everything is there okay so that's it for editing our cinematics um, be on the lookout for that edit I'm gonna go ahead and finish that probably today and then um, we'll go from there if you have any tutorials you want to see go ahead and comment down below or my DMs are open on Twitter, so feel free to slide right in there because I know you want to. And that's basically it. I hope you have a guy. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'm out. Peace.